Welcome everybody to Coffee Breaks. This is a candid conversation between members of my team and myself. My name is Martina Flor. I am a lettering artist. I run a design and custom typography studio in Berlin. And today I will be having a conversation with Elias Prado, the senior designer in this studio. In these conversations, we touch on different topics that are related to running a creative business like hiring and working as a team and getting feedback and all of this beautiful stuff. So today, what are we gonna be talking about? Yes, I have uh, a couple of topics, but for today I would like to touch on clients and uh -huh. client work. So, um, I mean, I have never worked as a freelancer. Uh, all the experience that I have is under uh, the name of some studio. Mm -hmm. So I never had to deal directly with the client myself. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, in, in a proper project or, a, or, or just by myself, let's say. And I'm, uh, a lot of questions pop up in this. And uh, I, I, will, I will guess that my first question is, what kind of personality is best to have in order to treat with a client like do you have to be an extrovert or can you do it also as an introvert like uh, the, the client work communication requires something from your personality that maybe you are born with or you have to train mm. interesting <laughs> i wasn't expecting to speak about <laughs> clients today yeah uh so are you are you do you have any particular client in mind that we're working with right any now or something <laughs> No, not really. Okay. I mean, I guess it's a gener generic question because uh, mm. I know like treating with clients and especially when you're ne negotiation, uh, negotiating fees, for example, that there's some sort of uh, in between the lines communication as well. Mm. Or, or that's actually the question, like how straight can you be with them without like sounding aggressive when you're discussing money budgets or um, or yeah, or also asking and receiving feedback. Uh, there's a lot of like um, communication that can be, uh, I don't know, tricky to, to, to yeah. make. Oh yeah. So there's a couple of questions in your question <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have the answers for mm -hmm. most of them, but yeah. I, I can, we can touch on different things. Like mm -hmm. one of them is like what you mentioned, like, um, I would say, having the skill to deal with someone, mm -hmm. right? In mm -hmm. this case, it's a client and there's a, there's a transaction that is going on with that person. There, it's not just any relationship that or a starting conversation with anyone. It's mm -hmm. a transaction, they are coming to you to get something in exchange of money, essentially, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there's for sure expectations in that relationship right they are expecting you to deliver a certain work mm -hmm. um, and you're expecting them to pay you pay essentially you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but i would say that i would say that the 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 most important part of the the relationship is mm -hmm. that you are able to get along with that person mm -hmm. or to maintain a a communication that is appropriate for the kind of relationship you have mm -hmm. you know and i think this applies to a lot of levels in life like you know i mm -hmm. usually think about how you know, I, I, I recently noticed this and I didn't tell you about this, but mm -hmm. we are working with the client right now mm -hmm. and we are, you know, we are um, kind of in the middle of a project right mm -hmm. now. And this client is not the easiest I have worked mm -hmm. with and they are, you know, they have second thoughts and they have all these backs and forths. And I noticed myself that I became really patient okay. <laughs> and before I would have, you know, in the early years when yes. I just started, I would just 
perhaps be a lot more reactive to what they say or like have less patience mm-hmm. in, in, in when it comes to getting their feedback or like dealing with their backs and forths and mm-hmm. stuff. And now it's like I have become a lot more empathic mm-hmm. with them. But I think that has to do with, you know, a lot of other things, which is like having a team Mm -hmm. and have having to be empathic with you for instance and Mm -hmm. with other members of our team yes but also having kids like (laughs) i really need to be empathic with my kids when they come up with stuff that is like i don't understand what's going on here (laughs) and they are acting in a weird way that has no explanation and i have to be um like really empathic with what what's going on yeah. try trying to find out what is the thing that is causing this mm-hmm. this reaction you know because yeah. i bet that the clients you know the clients we work with or you know anyone works with mm-hmm. they have their own stories they're carrying their own baggage they have their own pressures that they have to deal with and in the transaction and relationship they have with you mm-hmm. you know that those things come out and you need to i feel that you need to learn to understand that it's not only about you you know yeah. and about the relationship they have with you but they're like managing a lot of other relationships in their mm-hmm. life so i i took a tangent here but <laughs> like it has definitely something to do with it i think you know we can bring it down to like hey we are dealing with someone you know Mm -hmm. and you need to kind of learn to deal with people in general Mm -hmm. i would say like um that connects with with another like with the kind of follow-up question that i had kind of prepared for this answer um because you mentioned like how being empathic empathetic empathetic (laughs) yeah empathetic Um, uh, kind of helps you to to communicate with this client and with any other person. Mm. And my follow up question was going to be like, what kind of skills do you think uh, is good to have in order to communicate uh, with client or with clients uh, generally? I think you can totally answer this question. Mm-hmm. Like, oftentimes, mm-hmm. I see, for instance, in you mm-hmm. and in other members of our team. Mm-hmm things that I have myself, you know, Mm -hmm. like, and that I like to see in other people treating me. Mm -hmm. I see it in you and I see it in Carla and I see it in, I don't know, Suha, like other people that are in our team. So what do you think? (laughs) Uh... What do you think though? Like, and you notice that too, right? Like we treat each other in a certain way. Yes. I mean, definitely respect is the first thing. I guess there is some something in between cordiality and also sort of uh, the easygoingness that we have that we can say like almost kind of anything to each other, but from a, uh, a professional pr- perspective and also uh, this uh, sort of a like respectful treatment. Um, can you give an, an example of that? Oh, whenever like feedback sessions are the first thing that come out to my mind, like whenever I show you something and mm. you know. If something sucks, you don't say like, "Oh yeah, that sucks." But you say like, "Hey, you know, this is a good start." You know, maybe we'll, let's. Not take that it I another. don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, but you know, like you can. It, there's a lot of ways to say something, you know, and yeah. uh, and definitely, it, like, it depends a lot on the other person who who is like, on the person who's on the other side. But you can say things in in a constructive way, and uh, to kind of. As a con- constructive uh, criticism, you can also say it in a negative way. Mm, it's a really destructive mm. uh, commentary. So I guess also like in that way, being respectful uh, points toward being like constructive mm. with, with the feedback that you're providing or with your yeah. Mm. Um, I think that's the first thing that comes to my mind when when I think of examples. Yeah. But I mean, we also have I, totally. I mm-hmm. I can totally see that and. There's something also that I see a lot in in you Mm -hmm. when you interact and like we we have as a team, we have a Slack channel. We have like a couple of productivity apps that we where we communicate with each other Mm -hmm. and um, which is something we are really proud of. We we exchange no emails. Yeah, (laughs) thank God. I mean, this is the dream for me, like 
there's no emails coming from the team and that's amazing coming back to uh, <laughs> slack. slack that i i love when i see you interacting mm -hmm. and it's such a friendly you interact in such a friendly way like mm -hmm. it's also like you know when someone comes up with an idea it's like everyone builds on top of that idea mm -hmm. and and it's kind of like hey that's really good or hey that that's a good starting point and we can add this or that mm -hmm. or you know there's always like a yes and or yes plus this yeah, you know yeah, and yeah. I, I i think i think this is this is a great skill mm -hmm. you know i think this is a great skill to deal with your team mm -hmm. but also to deal with a client you know like mm -hmm. yes but we can add this or we can turn it into that or mm -hmm. you know yeah so the yes the yes and could be <laughs> like one of the one of the skills that like the people skills that you need to have but yeah what other thing like what other thing do we have that is like applicable to to client work or to dealing with clients in the communication that we have like inside the studio let's say yeah Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think like kind of everything connects like being respectful and um, sort of like giving like a supportive feedback that is constructive and is not destructive, plus being friendly as well. Like, mm. um, yeah, you touch on something that is like maybe some uh, sometimes it's, it's kind of like taken for granted that you have to be like friendly. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's something nice to have But it's not like studio. this, actually. Yeah. Like, no, I mean... Yeah, friendly is not the the most common thing, I would say. <laughs> really, like, I, I feel that in the beginning, I wasn't friendly with some, um, Client. with some clients. Yeah. Like, when I felt that they were going beyond... beyond a certain boundary, mm -hmm. I would get, like, pissed, yeah, you know? And, and it would show. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, now that I look back to that, I mm -hmm. think like, what they, maybe they didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, no one is just unfriendly with someone or not, no one goes beyond mm -hmm. certain boundaries just because, you know, like I think it's either the boundary is not really clear mm -hmm. or you just didn't know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I think that Perhaps it has to do with having certain attitude towards people that is not thinking that they are there to take advantage of you, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and being in this um, reactive or defensive attitude mm -hmm. um, as opposed to, you know, having like a positive vision on what the people wants with you, you yeah. know, like the the same that in the way we interact in the team like mm -hmm. you know i'm not expecting anyone here to tell me like i i don't i let me just like rub it around my head and yeah. kind of find the idea but i don't i don't really expect anything bad from you, mm -hmm. you know, from you or from anyone like i really expect that you would do the best and that you you want to arrive to a good result in mm -hmm. whatever we are doing. Yeah. So if you think that a client is also looking or behind the same goal of mm -hmm. like, hey, I want to get to a good result, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't, you, there's no reason for you to be defensive and to be like reactive. Yeah. It's like, there's someone that is trying to work with you to get to the best result, yeah. you know? And if you think about it this way, then it's just you can only expect good things from that person. Yeah, that's unless they are like assholes, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> which there yeah. are, there of are course. <laughs> but you know, but then maybe there is a reason not to work with that person in the first place. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, absolutely. <laughs> you know I get it. I get it. I'm sure that we have no, we have no assholes in yeah, our yeah, team yeah. and. Yeah, and I, I think we have never worked with assholes. <laughs> Let's try I, to keep it that maybe, way. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but I cannot tell, put names. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Well, like, we can say that. I, no one is listening. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let the witch hunt uh, begin. Um, yeah. Okay, so I have one last topic regarding this uh, client communication okay, good. that I would like to, to ask you. And um, maybe like um, step, steps back in terms of communication, but it's really interesting to know if looking for clients, let's say, the act of looking for clients, of going out there and like sort of start, I don't know, giving your uh, business card to people in, in, in a way, um, requires some um, some extroverted personality from you. You know what mm. I mean? Like if you if you're yeah. like an introvert introvert person, can you actually successfully find clients? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and if you have any tips for that, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a, it's a particular question. Coming, coming yeah, yeah, yeah. from you, right? <laughs> Are you thinking so, of going out answer, there? Answer to your <laughs> listeners. The listeners is me, basically. <laughs> totally. Uh, because Elias uh, defines himself as an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I didn't say that. No, 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 no. You said that. I say it. I say. Uh, so if you need to be outgoing, mm -hmm. I, I would say that there is cases mm -hmm. in which it has worked that someone is very introvert and they made it anyways mm -hmm. they they made themselves visible and they managed to you know to find opportunities for themselves mm -hmm. but i would say that's the least of the cases yeah that's the, you know that those are the exceptions that you hear and you think like oh yeah you can definitely do There's it, still but a actually, <laughs> yes. But it's like th those are the exceptions. Yeah. What I what I would say, which is a much more attainable goal, mm -hmm. is that you can train yourself. Yeah. You know, like you can totally train yourself mm -hmm. into being a, I wouldn't say an extroverted person, but to be a person who can start a conversation yeah. and can you know connect with people. I think this is something anyone can train and even like those that are you know not because of being an extrovert you will necessarily be able to connect with people because you mm -hmm. can be an extrovert and just be this kind of people who are like talking about themselves and kind <laughs> of like all the time trying to show up and say like oh yeah because i do this and that and, and never listen to other people yeah, I, I understand. and yeah. never really connect uh, with other people so mm -hmm. being an, intro an extrovert is not necessarily a plus you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like connecting with someone requires a lot more than just talking yeah you know and it's like and i feel that an introvert can learn that as as much as as well as uh, an extrovert you yeah. know so yeah, extroverts yeah. need to learn that as well um so yeah i would say that it's easier to focus yourself into training mm -hmm. that than into just pretending that it will happen to you, you know, yeah, like yeah, it, it will, sorry, pretending that it will happen or expecting that it will happen for you. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Do you know what I mean? It's That's like a really a, good answer. I yeah. think it's a, like, a, like, a, like a much more proactive, proactive um, attitude that mm -hmm. is like, well, I would just say as I am, and yeah. you know, I hope that things will happen to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I see, don't know, I see. but yeah. Yeah. But um, what else? That was already well. Answer. Maybe we we'll go to the takeaways. Yes, but like before that, uh, let me yeah. just touch on the uh, because you mentioned something that I think it goes. We are too close, Elias. We are not used to be so close, and yeah. especially oh, well, now with we, we need to comment on this because now with with the COVID pandemic, we were in the studio. We were actually trying to keep. Um, we were doing that. We mm -hmm. have our masks and everything. We were <laughs> keeping social distance and and so on. Like we need to use the masks around the studio, but now. Elias got infected yeah. a couple of uh, weeks ago. I as well got infected. So now we feel really immune. Yeah, this is a Corona immune. podcast right now. <laughs> totally. We feel, <laughs> now we are like, oh yeah, we can totally do this. We can even come closer. We don't need to keep social distancing. So yeah. yeah. 
But yeah. it's a bit it's a bit sketchy because we are not used to be <laughs> so close for a long time. So yeah, 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 yeah. something new. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, yeah the, the takeaways like before you mentioned something that really uh, made a click in my head and you said something about listening and mm. I think that's also some of the skills that you can totally take advantage of when when you're communicating with a client or with, mm. with a team as well like not only like communicating in a respectful or constructive way uh, but also listening to the other person mm. and actually taking them into account like <laughs> if they are saying something it's because they are trying to say something right? like, <laughs> and, and, and if you listen to it and you like yeah, build on top of that, then it's, uh, I guess it's a really uh, nice way to communicate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, going to the takeaways. We... I think that's a very good takeaway. Yeah, yeah, Listening. definitely. Yeah, Listening. totally. That's why I think that, you know, sorry. Yeah. Like, I think that this thing of like, you know, being an extrovert is not necessarily a must or a, a plus to yeah. connect with someone. Yeah. You know, I, I, been in touch with people who are like oh my god make this person shut up because it's like <laughs> they cannot stop talking they never ask you a question back yeah, they, yeah. they are never interested in listening what you have to say yeah. or what your story is so mm. you will never connect with that person you know yeah. so it's yeah listening is super important definitely definitely so take away number one yeah <laughs> being uh, empathetic when it comes when it comes to communicating with clients yeah right so being empathetic you say being empathetic yeah, I don't know why I'm writing. Like if I, <laughs> I like this takeaway. I, I'm gonna put it like on the side of my desk just to remember when I communicate. Where this clients. like email like, from the client is coming? Yes. Like, please remember to be empathetic. Yeah. <laughs> don't go crazy. <laughs> don't react. Um, listening, being listening. empathetic, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, listening. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess being like constructive or uh, friendly goes inside being empathetic uh, yeah um yeah i would say like not being which i think perhaps this is very personal mm -hmm. but i think that is something that i had to grow into mm -hmm. like kind of growing into the idea that i don't need to be defensive with mm -hmm. the world that mm -hmm. i'm not in a battle for, yeah definitely you know what i mean it's yeah. like i think for a long time i or i personally had to really struggle with a lot of different things in my yeah. in my life because i i don't know i moved countries i i had to do a lot of different stuff mm -hmm. and or like go through a lot of different battles yeah. and for a long time I felt that I was alone against everything and mm -hmm. kind of like I think it's that's why I say it's very personal it's, it's interesting to realize now that it's like you know it's fine they're they're not against you or yeah, like yeah, the yeah. clients are not against you or the team is not against you it's like you don't have to fight them back you mm -hmm. know they're there for you to work with you you mm -hmm. know and I think this perspective is something I changed or I worked towards in the last few years. Yeah. Whereas before I was such an, in a, such a survival kind of attitude yeah. that I felt that why well, I have to defend myself from, you know, yeah, other yeah, yeah. things, competition or, you know, other people I who want it. to take my place or whatever. And I think I would have loved to have learned that earlier, you know, mm -hmm. like I think um, it's a much more joyful attitude to think that you know the other person on the other side is is for you yeah yeah you know? absolutely so definitely more optimistic empathetic listening friendly um not fighty or not not defensive not defensive we have a couple of things yeah here. and the last thing that we mentioned that uh maybe you don't have to be an extrovert to approach client or approach you don't have people. to be an extrovert to approach people and uh, that you can train communication you can train yeah this, exactly uh, to start a conversation yeah i love that okay okay so we got it yeah thank you everybody for listening i hope this <laughs> session about communicating with clients and finding clients <laughs> was useful for you and see you on the next session of coffee breaks ciao, ciao, ciao. <laughs>